John Daniels, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how to assemble a DI SPIM from ASI. So when you get a DI SPIM, um, you'll get a bunch of boxes. There'll also be a packet that has a bunch of paperwork. There, in here, there's a manual that goes through this whole process. And by the time you get it, um, the paper copy is probably outdated. But we have a we keep a current version on our website. So it's just here, this DI SPIM and iSPIM user manual. And this manual contains everything that I'm going to go over, but I think it helps to have a visual. So when you uh, get your boxes, the, there will be a big one that has the actual RAM frame. So that's the inverted microscope. There's another box here that has, uh, let me pick it up. This one has the actual uh, DI spin head, so with the piezos and arms and everything. So this is the most fragile part. Um, it's well marked that way. There's a couple of small boxes. This one has the scanners in it. This one has um, the install kit, so the cables and then some tools. And uh, this one has the Tiger controller, which is the, the modular controller that drives everything. It's helpful to have a few basic tools. Um, there will be a, an Allen key set in that install kit, but it helps to have your own. And then just um, a couple screwdrivers, a Phillips and regular. And compressed air helps just when you're uh, blowing off the optical elements. So um, I'm going to unbox all these things, and uh, we'll be right back. So I took, took stuff out of the boxes, and you see we have more boxes, things like uh, here the mirrors, a C-mount adapter, some filters, stage insert. Um, here's the uh, set of tools, and we're going to need a 6 millimeter wrench first, so I went ahead and grabbed that out. Uh, this is what the scanners look like. Um, over here I set up the Tiger controller, the joystick, and all the cables. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually put the RAM um, and the spim head onto the RAM. So, like I said, the, the RAM comes in a big box. And there's a little bit of stuff on the top. And then basically you can just lift this out. Here's the RAM. Um, I think it weighs 30 or 40 pounds, something like that. It's not too bad. Take the feet off. So this is the inverted microscope frame right here, and basically it's complete. We have to add just a couple of adapters. There will be pictures in the manual of what you need to add. This one has a, um, a spot here for uh, a liquid light guide at the illumination source, and um, there's a cube here, you can put a filter. We'll put that C-mount adapter here and then a camera. For the, uh, for the inverted microscope on here. So um, first though, let's go ahead and put the spin head on. So if you take off this tape here, you'll see a couple of dowels, alignment dowels, and these big screws. This has an M6 head. And go ahead and take these off to start. And then the whole spim assembly, basically, we're just going to pick up and set right on top of here. So this, um, to be safe, it's it's probably a two-person job, but it has nothing to do it with one person. So in this box is the actual spim head. Well packaged. Charity has done a great job of figuring out packing material. Yeah. So you can just lift this right out. So this right here is the spim head. This is the arm that it mounts to. And this arm is universal. It'll go on anybody's upright microscope. Um, we're going to put it on the RAM, the ASI version. And these holes basically go on those uh, dowel pins that, uh, that I just showed you. So you just take this. side, push it back, it can kind of rest on the dowels, and then 
we're just going to screw in these bolts. All right, so one other, one other thing, when you're, um, if you need to set down the spin assembly, set it down using the back arm and resting on the two lenses like that so that the piezos aren't, um, aren't getting compressed. So we've had a couple instances where the piezos have been damaged um, mechanically and it's really easy to do that if you set this down like this instead. So just make sure if you need to set it down, set it down like this. But it's, you know, not that heavy. You should be able to grab it from the box and go ahead and stick it right on. Like that. All right. So now you have your, um, the spim head on the ram frame. Now the next step is going to be actually filling up the, all the spots that are labeled empty. Uh, all the yellow things are basically places where we need to fill and uh, we'll take the blue tape off like where the objectives go and put cameras and scanners there. So that's what I'll show you next. So um, let's go ahead and start by just um, doing the stage. So there's a bolt for shipping that just keeps the stage from moving around during shipping. It's really easy to remove and just set that aside. If you ever need to ship the stage back to ASI, this bolt needs to be reinserted to protect the stage during shipping. Now on this, um, for this order, we don't have a, um, a objective for the bottom. The customer is providing that, so I'm not gonna mess with that. I'll go ahead and do the, we'll put on the C-mount for the uh, inverted microscope part. There's just some blue tape here on the tube. And here's the C-mount adapter in this box right here. Pretty straightforward. There's just um, a beveled edge here. That there are three set screws that tighten into that edge. And this is an M2. So I'm we'll just tighten these down. I don't have a camera right here, but the camera just goes right on the C-mount uh, right here. So, you can see. so there's just a C-mount where you screw on the camera right there. Right. Let's go ahead, um, I've got it here, let's go ahead and put on the scanners and the cameras. So the scanners, again, just have a little cover on this cap and they go on these, um, on the two bottom tubes. And you can either screw this in, or what I like to do is actually take off the C-mount adapter. All right, so I'll just show you how you can take off this C-mount adapter from this tube lens where the scanner goes. So a couple of the holes may be accessible, like this one right here. Um, if there's any that aren't accessible, this one's not quite. You can actually just firmly twist the whole tube lens, like this. Um, the ring that's on the end of the tube lens actually has a threads on it, so you can, uh, you're basically unscrewing the threads that are right here, just a little bit, and you can access those set screws so that you can take off the, uh, the C-mount adapter. And same thing when you're putting it back on, want to have the scanner, the, um, the fiber head ends up pointing up towards the center of the microscope like this. And you want to go ahead and screw it all the way in and then if you need to, uh, if you need to turn the tube lens to get it turned correctly, then go ahead and do that. So in both these cases, I need to turn the tube lens. And the easiest way to do that is with these screws right here. So these 
I'm just loosening this, the screws that allow this, this tube lens to turn, rotate, and we'll get it to the right angle. Now you want to, actually it's helpful, it saves time later to get this at exactly 45 degree angle. So the, the easiest thing to do is actually to sight right along the cube and twist it until it's right at um, a right angle with the cube. You can just kind of judge by eye when that scanner is sticking up straight compared with this edge right here. So you just sight along there and twist it slightly. And now let me do this other cube, the other scanner. During the, um, during the alignment that you make once the cameras are on here, this, the exact angle of the scanner, you might need to tweak it a little bit, but it really pays with both the scanners and the cameras to get them, you know, very, get them good just by eye. You can just by eye judge them within about one degree of the, the proper orientation. So again, just side along this edge and tweak it until it's, it's perpendicular. All right, so scanners are on. Uh, we do the same thing with the cameras. I just have a couple of cameras here just to show. In this case, I'll take this the C map the C map out. There's a handy set screw right here and right here that actually allows this whole tube lens to be taken out if you want, or at least to be rotated easily. So I just took out this uh, the C mount to tube lens adapter. We'll put it on the camera. Put the camera on. Put that adapter back into the tube lens. And I can't remember off the top of my head which is the correct of the four orientations of this camera. It's in the manual though. Um, and you know, really the choice depends on a lot of factors, but we have a default or a recommended uh, orientation. And I believe it's like that, but I'm not sure. Check the photos in the manual. And again, you want to just um, turn it, and you can loosen this set screw a little bit and turn the whole tube lens until you get it... Um, lined up, the camera lined up with the cube. And tighten it down. Same thing on the other side. Take off the blue tape. I should also mention that if you have an incubation chamber, it's easiest to do the initial setup of the microscope before you put the microscope into the incubation chamber. And then once you have everything set up, then you can um, move the micro set the microscope aside temporarily and put your incubation chamber on the air table and then lift the, lift the microscope into the chamber. I should also mention that our uh, the DI SPIM the micromanager solution right now works with three different cameras. These Hamamatsu Flash 4s is one of them. Uh, also, there's a PCO Edge works fine, and the Andor Xylas. And we're happy to add support for other cameras. We just have to do a little bit of um, adding some code to the micromanager plugin. All right, so now I have my cameras and my scanners all aligned. And next step is to install the objectives. This is our new objective system, or the uh, piezo mount system, I should say. And there's a little set screw right here. So down here, there's three little holes. The outer two are for the detents, and the center one has a set screw in it. 
just use a 1.5 millimeter uh, Allen key, loosen it, and then this whole thing slides off the dovetail. And it's easy to put back on. It'll click once, click twice when both detents are in place. And uh, it's in there pretty good. And you just retighten it right here. This is new as of the beginning of 2015. If you're a former DI SPIM user, we can upgrade you with this new new system. But it's uh, it's nice that the you can basically pull off the whole piezo, which allows you to easily change the objectives, clean the objectives, whatever you want. So over here I have objectives. Objective simply screws into the bushing. This black knurled piece is the bushing, and it's we have improved these bushings recently as well, so that they have little Teflon slides in them that make it a really tight fit at the threads. Because later on, to align the spim, you actually have to adjust the exact axial position of the objective by screwing and unscrewing those threads. So we'll just leave it like that. The, uh, it doesn't end up exactly this way always, but there's a, um, the nominal spacing between the bushing and the top plate of the piezo actuator is one millimeter. So that's roughly one millimeter. And I'll just slip that back in. It kind of clicks into place, and then we'll tighten the set screw again. Now we'll do the other side here. Well, during the alignment process, you have to get these two objectives co-focused. And also, incidentally, you co-focus the bottom objective as well. So to get these objectives co-focused in a three-dimensional space, you need three axes of motion. So we get two of them by screwing and unscrewing the two objectives. And the third axis is using this screw right here, which slightly moves um, the whole piezo uh, with respect to the arm. Well, this is also a recent improvement. We used to have an adjuster like this that uh, sat on this side of the piezo instead, but this is a much, much nicer system, and it makes it so that the piezo does not have to drive the, the weight of this of this adjuster. All right, so just be a little careful here not to scratch the objective. And we'll slide that back in. Clicks into place. All right, so there we have it. They're not perfectly co-aligned yet, but the first step, I guess, in doing that is just do it by eye. Just look for the objectives to be symmetric. And the gap between them, the gap between the two objectives is just a couple, um, a few hundred microns. So you can stick a piece of paper in to get a, a good sense of if the gap's about right. So that's about right. And we just would want to check that they're more or less symmetric. looks okay. And then also that side to side they look about right. This one's a little bit harder to judge by eye. If you look here you can tell it's somewhere like right there. So you basically get the, the two objectives more or less co-aligned by eye. You get the cameras and the scanners at the right angle by eye. The final thing that I'm going to show you now is how to insert the, the mirrors and the filters into these cubes. So if you take off the thumb screws, you see this filter cover just has a little dovetail piece. I'll show you that. And what goes into there is a, we call a D cube. These 
these bottom two cubes will hold the dichroic filters that reflect the laser light coming, the laser light goes into the scanners here, through the scanner is steered to make the sheet, and then there's a dichroic that sits right here that um, will reflect the excitation light down through the illumination objective, and then it would normally be imaged, the, the photons, the fluorescent photons will be captured by this objective, pass through the dichroic here and into that camera. So this is imaging path A, and then the other, there's a symmetric path that goes from this scanner, uh, illuminating through this objective, photons collected here, and imaged on this camera. So I'm just going to show you how you uh, go about installing the, the filters. So you get a box that has what we call D cubes in it. Here's a little tool you need, it's called a room tool. So here is the, the D cube. So it's just a few pieces that hold filters and goes onto this dovetail and fits in the microscope that way. So I'll just first take this part off. For the DI spam, unless you want to um, have an excitation filter to filter your, your laser light, you actually don't need this top part. You just need this part, which will hold the dichroic here. And then this part will hold the, the filter that's the emission filter that blocks the laser light as it's coming back to the camera, to the imaging camera. So I have a couple of filters here just to show you. So this would be the emission filter, and this is the dichroic. Um, these are really cheap ones. You probably have a much more expensive set of filters and you want to be careful and refer to the manufacturer's instructions on installing them. Now the DQ can accommodate a two millimeter thick dichroic, or if you have a one millimeter thick dichroic like this one, there's this little, um, little spacer that comes in there. So since I have the one millimeter thick dichroic, I'll just combine the dichroic with the spacer and slide it in. I need to loosen these screws a little bit more. There we go. So it just slides into this clip and tighten these screws. And you always want the, the reflective surface of the dichroic to be up when you're doing this. We'll with a little bit of compressed air. So that's the dichroic, and then the emission filter for the imaging pathway we'll put right here. And again, it matters what orientation you put it in. Refer to the filter, the instructions that came with your filter set. There we go, so I got that seated down in there. And then in that D cube kit, there'll be a little ring like this. That ring goes in, and the ring has a couple of little notches that the ring tool fits right into. And it allows you to screw that threaded ring right down in. So now we have a filter, the dichroic, and an emission filter in this cube. And we're going to put it back onto the, the cube cover. So the cube cover has a little uh, eccentric screw right here. That eccentric screw fits into the groove and allows you to slightly move the move the D cube in it uh, back and forth, even once it's installed. So we'll let's first start by just raising that eccentric screw enough to get it into the groove so that it's held. And then this other screw is just a, a set screw that affixes the cube tightly 
or I'm sorry, it, it fixes the D cube tightly to the dovetail so that it doesn't slide. So this is how it ends up looking like this. And then let me just stick this in right here. So obviously there's a correct orientation. The, the dichroic is going to point down so that the light coming from the scanner is deflected down into the objective. But if you use that eccentric screw uh, into the groove as your guide, then you'll get it right every time. There's no ambiguity. So there's that. And now I'll show you how to install the right angle mirror. So this upper cube, it just has a, a simple mirror in it. And that mirror directs the light back to the camera. The only reason we do this is so that the camera can be held um, back here instead of having to be all the way out here on a long tube lens. So here in the install kit, the right angle mirrors. And again, the mirror is on a dovetail, uh, female dovetail mount, and it has a little groove in it right there. Again, that groove goes right uh, where the eccentric screw fits in. Tighten this until I find the, yep, I found the groove. And then I can tighten this all the way. So if you do want to adjust the mirror position when it's in there, you can slide it slightly along the dovetail, just a couple millimeters. If you loosen the set screw slightly and then turn the eccentric screw, and I'm sure you can't see this, given the, uh, a little closer here, so this mirror is sliding ever so slightly, just a few millimeters along the dovetail. So that's an adjustment you can make without having to remove the mirror. And then once I have it in a good place, I'll just, for now, I'll put it in the center of the travel, and then I just tighten this other screw, which is the set screw holds it in place. And put that in. So now the next step is simply to do that with the other side. So this upper tube lens for the camera should be held uh, relatively in the center of the cube. If it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because what really uh, what's important is the angle that the, uh, the light rays go into that lens, not so much the, uh, the exact position. So as long as it's more or less centered, uh, you'll not have vignetting and no problems. But if you're really far off from center, what you can do is you can loosen these two bolts there and there. And there's a little, there's little slots that give you some adjustment. So I just loosen them enough. Now I can spread this. I can move this tube lens around, get it more or less centered on the cube. Uh, and you'd want to basically have the cube in the position where it's lowered and um, you know the same position that you'd be using to actually image and just retighten them and you're good to go. All right so now we've finished installing the cubes and the mirrors and I'm going to briefly show you how to install the cables. Before I do that though I wanted to show you the bottom objective as well so I went ahead and put a bottom objective on here and your system will come with a few of these splash guards. There's just different size holes depending on which objective you have. And this just simply slips underneath. And over the objective. And this way if you crash and break a dish or something like that, the water won't get down into the optical path of the inverted microscope. So um, now for the cables. So I'll start with the piezo cables. So there's two piezo cables and um, one for each piezo and they'll have a serial number on them. And so you just want to make sure you, you match the serial number on the cable with the serial number on the controller. So usually this one is our access letter P. You usually put that on card four. Um, but 
to really make sure I want to check this is 484 and this is cable number 484. So that piezo is going to go here. The other piezo cable um, would go here. And here's the micro mirror card. So the micro mirror card has a cable that has a pigtail on the end. So one, one end of the cable will go here and the other end I'll show you has So the other end of the cable has a pigtail on it. So one goes to one scanner and the other goes to the other scanner. And the way you tell, the one that's labeled BA, that's for path A. And so again, our convention is that path A is the scanner on the left and the camera on the right. So this cable goes back here. And it's labeled BA. Scanner while I plug that in, and the DC cable is going to go over on that side. And on all these cables, there's just a couple of screws that you can tighten just to hold them down. Uh, now I'm not going to go through all that, and then this end course for the scanner goes to the, uh, the micromirror. There's another cable that you'll receive that looks like this. This is only needed if you want to drive the, the scanners with an external voltage. So if you're using LabVIEW or something like that to control the scanners, this goes right here. Right. And then there's four analog voltages for the four axes of the scanners, two for each scanner. This card right here, uh, this is our new programmable logic card, so it has eight outputs. So getting the, uh, the programmable logic card, or PLC, is a requirement to do multicolor imaging. Two are for the camera, one is for the camera side select, so basic, or I'm sorry, the, the laser side select. So selects, if you have a Galvo or something like that, which of the two scanners the beam is going to, and then these bottom four are for up to, up to four lasers. So that's the, the PLC. This right here is the, um, the ZF card. So this controls the Z axis, which according to our naming convention is the lower uh, microscope, the inverted microscope, and the F axis, which is this LS50, which moves the whole spim assembly up and down. So there's a cable here. Oh, that's the XY. Here's the ZF cable. So again, there's one here, and then there's two different ends. The F goes up above to this connector, and the Z goes down below to the connector that's right here. And finally, there's an XY cable. So the uh, one end goes here, and then on the XY stage, this is the Y connector, and down below here is the X connector. And you put those cables on. This right here is for these LEDs that can be used for illuminating the sample. Nothing fancy, but there's a little LED connector. We usually put it on card one and one end goes here, and then the other end goes on a little, little tiny uh, connector that's right here on the back side. Turn this around so you can see. There's a really small connector right here that's for those, those LEDs. The last card on the Tiger controller, this bottom one, is the COM card. So the COM card has an input to the joystick. So here's the joystick. It has an XY and two wheels. So there's a cable that's labeled joystick. It goes from here to here. And then there's a USB connector that goes to your host computer. And the final cable 
just a power cable, standard cable. It goes from the back of the rack mount Tiger controller to the AC power. So it would take you about uh, an hour or two at the most to go through what I've showed you. And once you've done that, you'll be ready to actually turn on your cameras, get them running, and start on the fine alignment, which requires actually looking at the images in cam the image of, uh, of the beam in a dye solution using the cameras. And then you're going to tweak the micro you're going to tweak the dichroic position, you'll tweak the, the position of these upper mirrors for the cameras. Uh, you'll tweak the exact position of the objectives using you know these three knobs that I showed you and you'll check the uh, the rotation of the cameras and scanners. So that's another process, that fine alignment, and hopefully we'll do another video sometime soon showing you how to do that. So that's all for today. Thank you very much, and um, thanks for choosing ASI.